It's time to talk Surface, Windows 11, Leaks, and Russia. Happy Friday, friends, and you better be happy because it's Friday. Those are the rules. I do not make them. I only simply enforce them. Anyways, I hope you had a wonderful week. It has been a busy week at the world of Microsoft. They dropped some new hardware is officially now out. They dropped some new software, Windows 11 now is officially now out. And they bought some companies and they dropped some reports. So let's just dive in. The first thing up, Microsoft dropped a pretty large cybercrime report out this week. And they're pointing a lot of fingers over at Russia and saying that they are the most likely culprit of many nations state attacks. Now, I don't know what you're exactly going to do with this information, but it's saying like, hey, that's where a lot of them are, are coming from. And so it's a little more information about where your attacks might be coming from. One of the fun things that has come out over the past couple years is that a, a potential easy way to mitigate some malware vulnerabilities is to actually install a Russian keyboard or language pack on your device because it has been known that some of these malwares and, and Bitcoin miners and all that stuff look for Russian language packs and if they find them, they don't activate. So just keep that in your back pocket. Micro Microsoft has also acquired Ally.io, and they are an OKR uh, recognition company, effectively, objects and key results. They are going to be merging this into Viva as they attempt to bolster up that service and make more companies buy into Viva, not Viva Las Vegas, but Viva, their intercompany um, tracking and, and health and reporting tools that allow, it, it think of sort of like an AR, HR, A. AR. It's, it's, mo it's HR portal like intranet experience. Definitely not HR stuff. Um, anyways, uh, Microsoft Cloud for Financial Services will become generally available November 1st. If you're not really familiar with what that is, it's just a line of software and services and hard, well not hardware, but software and services capabilities through Azure, which is technically hardware, and it's designed for the financial sector. It's a basically an out-of-the-box or just a bundling uh, package of stuff, but that is officially becoming available November 1st. So, uh, big week this week on the 5th or a couple days ago, Windows 11 officially arrived on the scene. Now, Microsoft isn't really sharing any usage data yet. Sometimes they will give us like an early adoption rate number. I don't know if they're going to do that this time around, but keep in mind that every Windows Insider will fall into that bucket. And so I'm sure they already have millions of people running it at this point. But we also know that they are not being super aggressive with it, especially uh, depending on the chipset, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But it wasn't, I mean, the, the reviews were pretty uniform across the board. It's that, hey, it's fine, but it is also not great. Um, it, and it's not that it's not visually appealing. I honestly like the way that Windows 11 looks. It's like, a, as the story note goes, and we all know the details here, is that there's just certain things missing that they didn't bring over from past versions of Windows 10, such as like, uh, un... I don't know, expanding the taskbar. I don't know what you want to call it, where you have, if you have three edge icon, three edge apps open, it doesn't collapse them into a single icon. Um, things like that, just right clicking on the taskbar and a whole bunch of other stuff. And so I, I think Windows 11 is fine overall. It's just Microsoft, it, it feels, if anything, maybe a little rushed. And um, which is, I, I think, a symptom of Microsoft making this not, it wasn't necessarily a last minute decision, if you will. But let's be honest, they had six years to build Windows 11, and this is what we got. Now, it, some people are going to say, well, that's not true because they, they kept updating Windows 10. It's not like they did nothing. And you're absolutely right. Uh, but would it really have hurt them to wait just a little bit longer to launch Windows 11? I don't know. doesn't matter. It is now out, and I think it's generally going to be well received. It's just it just missing a few things that I think power users are going to want. So that's that. Um, but the bigger release that really is happening alongside this, so you have the Windows 11 OS coming out. And then you also have a guy like this. This is the Surface Pro 8. And I have been using it for a week. And there's also Surface Laptop Studio here, which we'll talk about in a second. And I will tell you just bluntly that if you like the Surface Pro lineup, you are going to absolutely like the Surface Pro 8. It is a fantastic device. It really pulls at the heartstrings if you've ever been a Surface fan. Like this is the device that nearly all of us have been waiting for. I guess maybe some people might say that about the Pro X and saying, hey, it's an ARM device, and I'm really waiting for an ARM, but uh, I think this is the one that the majority of us have been waiting for. Apparently, I think this thing is updating um, as the fans kick up. But this device is fantastic. They've done a good job with really honestly just addressing everything that everybody complained about. Um, it's not perfect per se, I guess. For it, There's some weird things that Microsoft does. As an example, out of the box, the 120 hertz display, which is like a big ticket item for this thing, is actually disabled. It's at 60 hertz out of the box. So you got to turn on 120 hertz. Now, speaking of a 20, 120 hertz, eh, it's nice. Like, it's one of those things that's really nice, 
but it's not necessary. And so if you're looking at getting maximum battery life, which I think is what Microsoft is pushing more for, and that's why they have it disabled, I honestly wouldn't run it. Uh, it's Some people are going to be like, wow, why would you do such a thing? But I will say this about the Surface laptops too. Again, it's nice, but I would rather have increased battery life at the end of the day if, I, if I'm... As an example, sitting in the back of an airplane or something like that. It's it's a nice thing. It's not really a required thing. But other than like some of the little itty bitty things, like if you like Surface Pro 8, you're gonna love this thing. Keep in mind that you can, in fact, hear the fans. The fans do kick on. If you, I, I never, I don't think I ever had them kick on when I ran it on the balance. But if you run it on anything on the higher performance modes, those fans are gonna kick on, and they do sound like a bag of Cobras in the back of the Surface. Uh, but that's okay. That's a, it, it's a trade off for the better performance, the thinner profile, the larger display, the better just overall device. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at buying a Surface Pro 8. It's not fanless it's definitely actively cooled and it's also just pretty darn good is i think the best way that i can explain it now the surface laptop studio is just a little bit different and by a little bit different i mean it's a chunky big boy like if you look at the, these two devices side by side and i and the service pro it really exacerbates how much bigger this surface laptop studio is i mean this laptop studio is almost four pounds and you can look at the actual profile here of how much bigger it is um, but they're two totally different devices the pro 8 while not cheap starting at about 1100 bucks plus you've got to buy a new type cover because your existing type covers are not going to be compatible and then if you want the pen version it's 250 dollars. so it gets expensive it gets like 1350 bucks to get a pro uh, get a Pro 8. Laptop Studio starts at about 1500 ish bucks and just goes to the moon after that. Now, the, the Laptop Studio is... I, I, I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot, honestly. It's a really, really interesting device. Where you have the Pro 8 is this minimalist, lightweight travel companion. This is like 1960s Soviet architecture style, like brutalist, but it gets the job done. It does it, it, it gives you function over form um, every day because it is very functional, right? You got the you got the crazy screen that comes up and, and like I tried to explain it in my review that it's almost like a like see how that comes out? I, I almost described that as like a violent pop out because you got to put a lot of force on top of this thing Microsoft chose some really strong magnets which I totally get why but the thing is it's a little unnerving when you're holding a potential three thousand dollar PC and you're like pressing on top of this thing and then it just kind of pops out at you and then it just slides forward here and just sits there and it's like what is going on and then just keeps going down 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 and then it just turns like it's a really neat device it is by far superior in nearly all regards to the surface book 3 which is right here except in a couple ways one the surface book 3 like i guess if you really want to detach a display surface book 3 is better but you're you're sacrificing a lot first off we all know the hinge not necessarily the mechanics but like the digital connection it is a little unstable and occasionally you get these things like hey you can now pull your display off and you've never touched it and i bet that microsoft has the data that says how often people pop that display off and i bet it's pretty small i bet it's pretty small and so that's okay and so it's it's not that Mike it's not that the book 3 was a bad design it's that Microsoft is not forcing it into existence with the service laptop studio they're trying to build a better mousetrap and candidly I think they did they also built a larger mousetrap with this fan vent thing down here which I will tell you when gaming or using high-end horsepower like apps and all that stuff this thing blows and it is it is very powerful and Microsoft put a lot of effort and, and, and basically it sounds like we need better thermals screw it let's just put this deck thing on here and we're not gonna try to ram it into a thin uh form factor and we're just gonna make it really whatever unique and so that's what it is much like the service book 3 has that teardrop design when you're looking at it from the profile Surface Laptop Studio has that we don't really care about how it looks. We're just trying to make it functional. And for I think for the right demographic or the right user, this thing's a pretty cool product. It really is. And so um, keep in mind that it can hurt your wrists a little bit, much like the Surface Book 3. Again, it has a really sharp edge. I believe the MacBook Pro is along the same line. And if you're typing for a long time, you get lines on your wrist and it, it can become uncomfortable. But it's it's a it appears well built the reason why i haven't done like a deep this is one of those products you have to review over many months because much like the surface book uh the the hinge did get more reliable like the surface book one the hinge came out of the box well sometimes not even working just because the whole battery is flat and sky like issue uh, but it did get more reliable we don't know the reliability yet on the Surface uh, Laptop Studio, if I call it the Studio Laptop, forgive me because I keep wanting to, Laptop Studio. 
We gotta we gotta wait and see. It, and only time will tell if this hinge mechanism up here in the display, because it's you can't really see it. But you but like is this gonna be uh, is this gonna be a problem long term? We don't know. You don't know until time tells. And a lot of people have these things in their hands. Overall, though, uh, this is like this event and, and release has been one of Microsoft's best. I think since. If you look at uh, reliability issues aside, back from when they launched the Surface Pro or Surface Book, because at the Surface Book event they did like a they did an updated Pro, they did I think it was the Band, they did a Lumia, uh, was it the 950 back then? They had the Book Three. They it was a huge event, and so Microsoft completely refreshing the Surface Pro 8, which is a fantastic device and always sells exceptionally well for them. And then you come out with this new form factor. You got the Duo. It's like it was a big event, and um, I I think these two things are are good products. Uh, the Surface Go 3 kind of got left behind, it feels like, but either way, um, I, I can recommend the Pro 8 to, to just about anybody for any reasons, but the Surface Laptop Studio, maybe maybe get your hands on one, because it is heavy, like, in comparison to something like this, it's a chunky board, and so the question becomes is like, how am I going to integrate these into my life? Um, the Laptop Studio will probably become my new primary laptop for the road. And then when I'm traveling with the family and just need to take something, it's probably going to be the Pro 8. Uh, but those are first world problems and nobody cares about that. So uh, speaking of this Surface hardware, Microsoft has also agreed to expand its right to repair options after some pressure from uh, internal and external forces. And so that's a good thing right now, right to repair. And being able to repair these devices is a huge deal because let's be honest, unless you're like exceptionally skilled, repairing a laptop these days is quite difficult, quite difficult. So Microsoft is going to be opening up, not opening up, but allowing third party repair shops to uh, eventually, at least according to what we know so far, gain access to the tooling and knowledge to be able to service these types of machines. Now, something I find absolutely hilarious, and, and this is not hilarious if you have an AMD-based PC, uh, but AMD has announced that, hey, if you're running some of our chips and you upgrade to Windows 11, uh, you could be getting anywhere from like a 5 to 15% uh, performance hit with Windows 11. It's like, wait, what? Uh, because Microsoft, for months, ever since the, the baseline specs of Windows 11 came out, has been telling us, like, we really ramp things up so we can have tighter control. We're going to have TPM 2.0. We're going to have, you have to these certain chipsets, and everything has to work to be able to run Windows 11 in a supported state. Great. We bought into, well, I don't know if we bought into that narrative, but that narrative existed. And then it comes out, it's like, oh, yeah, if you're running an AMD chip, like, sorry, we just screwed you out of 15%. It's like, well, then what was the point of ramping up this baseline? Now, they are going to fix this. So supposedly this month, and I'm assuming that if you have an AMD-based device, Microsoft is not pushing out Windows 11 to it, uh, but just like it's... It they had this narrative in place, and also hilariously, I believe the uh, Windows, the Health Check app also says the Surface Lab, for Surface Studio 2 does not currently support Windows 11, even though it does. Um, anyways, you know, bumbling, fumbling aside, it's, uh, I just found a little bit of humor in that. Also, Google is going to be launching the Pixel 6 on October 19th. If the new iPhone is not for you and you're not a Samsung Galaxy fan, uh, maybe the Pixel 6 will be your thing. So keep your eyes open for that. On to the gaming news of the week. There wasn't too much this week, but there were a couple like major things. First off, Microsoft is ramping up its 20th anniversary sort of uh, highlights, if you want to call it that. They're releasing some, some new hardware, including a new controller, which I think looks fantastic. Also, a new wired headset. It just has nice green accents to it. Same with the controller. There's some new shoes. There's some new shirts. And there's a whole bunch of other things that are coming, um, I believe, here to help celebrate the 20th anniversary of Xbox, because 20 is a big deal in the world world of gaming. Um, the other big major thing happening this week is that what happened with Twitch. Now, there's been a lot of uh, controversy. It's like people got upset when they realized how much people on Twitch are making. Like, what do you think they're doing? That If you're able to stream full time and you're having millions of followers, you're going to be making some good money. And that is how it works. Like, if you got to think about like the, the top creators of the world are the professional athletes or the celebrities of the gaming space. You know how much a celebrity makes for making a movie? It's a lot of money and you would probably be quite annoyed too if you learned how much they're making these people are not scraping by because, because they're huge personalities companies are throwing tons of money at them influencer related marketing is a very big deal and a very effective way to market products and when you have people who can stream a video game and get hundreds of thousands of people to watch it you're going to be getting paid a lot of money i don't know why people were so surprised by this i think they wanted them to be like hey this guy's a scrappy streamer he's sitting in his house and even though he's got tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment, he's just like me. Like, that's not how it works. Like, as you get, Twitch is huge. Twitch is massive. And so I, I, 
I was, people were like, well, I can't believe whatever is making so much. I was like, good for them. Like what, what is not apparent in these numbers is that these people were working exceptionally hard for years without making a dime. If you want to be, this YouTube channel itself doesn't make much money, but, uh, there were, it used to not get any views. Video views used to be like, I'd be happy if I got to 200 views and nobody gave, nobody cared. And I did it because I loved doing it. And a lot of these streamers are, were very similar. They didn't just walk into Twitch one day and then suddenly have a million views on all their stuff. They had to work for it. And it takes, it's a very, you have to be very committed over the long term. Anybody who ever says, I want to start a YouTube channel, I want to start a blog. My first advice to them is always be prepared to write that only your mom is going to read or watch for the first five years. If you are comfortable doing that, then you've got a shot. If you think you're going to be able to publish a video or a, a post or something, and you think it's going to blow up and you're going to instantly have 10,000 people reading your stuff every day, you're out. Like that's not going to work. And so, uh, I don't know. I don't know why there was a blowback for people who have worked exceptionally hard um, to get where they are. And then people are like, oh, what do you mean you make a bunch of money? Uh, I mean, that's just kind of the way the world works. So um, either way. Anyways, there's a bunch of questions this week, which is always my favorite part, even though I didn't get to it last week because I was traveling. I'm actually might be traveling next week a little bit too, but uh, we will see. Anyways, we are going to kick the questions off here with Mad Thinus coming in with the first question. He says, Windows 11, do we now wait for a year for the remainder of the features to arrive in the next big bang release? Or will Microsoft turn them on uh, monthly as when things are ready, making the yearly cadence basically just a roll-up point? Uh, so this is, this is the big unknown right now. For example, Android apps running on Windows 11. The build that everybody well, could be running right now, the build that Microsoft is pushing up, Microsoft has internally the capability to run Android apps on that. That is how they're testing it. The question becomes, how is this going to roll out? Are they going to roll out Android apps to, to Windows 11 users, or are they going to roll it out to Insider Program and then put a shit out uh, next year and make us wait a year? We don't know. Technically, all this stuff comes through the Microsoft Store. So it's it's decoupled from the OS. So realistically, they could push it out through the store and be like, look, it's it's February. Here's your Android app stuff. We, we didn't break our promise that we're only doing one update per year because look, this comes through the store. It's not an OS. It's sort of a, a juggling of the information, but we don't know yet. This is one of the big questions that is out there is Microsoft tr said they're doing one update per year. What does that mean? We know there's going to be security updates and, and patching and that sort of thing, but what about features? What about context menu on the taskbar is that going to be a feature that we have to wait for a year for it to be natively included in in windows 11 we don't know yet microsoft could push it out they have the capability but they've also said we're doing one update per year and that would probably break their one update per year thing and so we don't know this is a great sort of unknown because with windows 11 we're in a new sort of era so uh, Stagger Steve says, hi, Brad, first time questioner here. Well, welcome, Steve. I am ready. I'm looking to pick up a Surface Pro X to play around with as a travel laptop. Uh, normally, when I purchase a second P secondhand PCs, I perform a clean install in ISO since I don't trust the previous owner's data and software wipe. I know there's no, I know there's the reset feature into Windows, but I prefer a USB installer for my own sanity. I noticed that there's, no, yep, there's no ARM installer media for Windows 10 uh, besides the pa besides the Insider Preview download. Is there an official media installer from Microsoft that I just haven't searched correctly, or am I stuck with the Insider Preview? I believe that you might be stuck with the Insider Preview. I the only reason I hesitate is there might be some, rec I don't know if there's recovery media out there. Microsoft made a big deal about not making the ARM, the native ARM build for Windows 10 available to the public. That's I, That was a thing. And so um, your best bet, the first thing, I, I totally get why you'd want to completely clean wipe. But I believe that if you do a factory reset inside of Windows, that is effectively it. That's going to be your best bet. Um, if you're worried... If you're worried about somebody potentially like putting some malware or something in that like a BIOS level, I because it's an ARM PC, that risk, in my opinion, is is much less likely than say on a an Intel or AMD based device because effectively you're, they're going to be writing their own app, and if somebody is going to be going that crazy that they're going to write their own malware to try to scam somebody out of money or steal their data, I don't think they would go with ARM as being something so low level that it wouldn't get wiped out by Windows 10 reset functionality. So I think that is probably going to be your best bet. 
Uh, Brother Nod says, as you step back from journalism as your primary income stream, do you think you've leaked your last exclusive? So, no, um, I don't. There, there's a couple things. Like, honestly, not having journalism being my primary source of income actually kind of frees things up if you think about it. Because Microsoft was an ad buyer on Petri and Therat. And so every time you would drop a major exclusive like the Xbox, like there's always that sort of thing in the back of your mind. It's like, well, is Microsoft not going to buy more ads because we've leaked XYZ product? Now, I would absolutely like, absolutely not be doing anything to ever jeopardize what is going on in Petri and Therat. Like, obviously, I'm still involved with them, still doing podcasting with them. And so it is not something that I ever would intend to spoil like that relationship at any capacity. But now that my income is linked to other things, Things, it's honestly like well you feel if you see what i'm saying like you honestly feel like you have a bit more information or freedom because you're not tied to the the media pipeline of cash flow at the end of the day but um i mean just like talking about the android stuff i'm always going to be passing along everything that i hear uh, as long as i'm able to vet and verify it and make sure it's the the right narrative as i learn more but um it, it is one of those interesting questions and i'm not a quote-unquote full-time journalist anymore and, uh, but I still got the YouTube channels, I still got the podcast, and that's what I love to do the most, and so that's why we are continuing to do them. Uh, Matt Thinus also says, uh, do we have a time frame yet when the new Microsoft Store is coming to Windows 10? Uh, da -da 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 -da. It's, it should be quick. It, it was supposed, I believe the original plans were to ship it right around the time Windows 11 was released, because they want one store to rule them, or one store or interface. But you got to remember too that they're also updating the backend mechanics of the apps that are allowed. So when it, you got to remember too also that Windows 10 has a massive install base, and Windows 11 has an itty bitty teeny tiny um, install base compared. Like we know that there's over a billion devices running Windows. I would imagine the majority of them are running Windows 10, and we're only probably single digit millions of Windows 11? I, I don't quite know. I, I would be surprised if it's more than 10 million running Windows 11. And so right now it, it would sound, feels like they're using Windows 11 as like an expanded beta pool uh, for that kind of stuff. But it will come, but we don't have, Microsoft I don't believe has announced an exact date yet. Um, Migi says, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Uh, do you think that my Asus laptop with an i5 of 7th gen will ever get Windows 11 update? Nope. And do you think that Microsoft will really leave them behind? Yep. Um, and those who are on unsupported hardware or where they will be supporting them, then a cumulative update. So they're not leaving that, that device behind. You still have roughly five years of Windows 10 active support, which means you're going to be getting patches and fixes and everything else. I don't believe you're going to be getting any more new features other than the, the notable Windows Store stuff or anything that comes through the store, which means in theory, would they bring Android apps to it? I don't quite know, but I, I don't think they would they would technically allow it. I mean, actually allow it because that's one of the features of Windows 11, not Windows 10 at the end of the day. And so I don't think they would do it. But no, the Microsoft seems like they're standing pretty firm that your device will not be getting it and you should just enjoy Windows 10. Uh, Confused Geek says, Hi, Brad, hope you're doing well. Confused Geek, I hope you are doing well. Uh, can you see a future where Game Pass will only offer Xbox exclusives? Uh, only offer? No. I, well, I guess it depends what you mean. Like, if you want to play it, an Xbox exclusive... Oh, if you mean that you can no longer buy Xbox games that are first-party exclusives, at, like, as a standalone title, maybe... I don't want to say never, because you could think about in 10 years down the road, the whole industry is going to probably be completely changed and evolved to some sort of streaming or servicing model, um, would be my guess, is how that's going to work. And so, potentially. But I don't think it's the near-term future. If you look at a title, let's just say Halo Infinite uh, single-player campaign, because the multiplayer is going to be free. Um, I could eventually see a time where Microsoft launches a Halo game and it's only in Game Pass because traditional game sales are just becoming effectively nothing. Um, everybody's hopefully, and in, in hopeful being in Microsoft terms, inside of the Game Pass subscription. So I don't think it's implausible that something like that could happen, but I don't think it's a near-term thing. Um, he says, I'm trying to figure out why they haven't moved from the 100 number. Uh, oh, for Xbox. I mean, I'm assuming you're meaning the Game Pass titles. There's a psychological aspect to it that more than 100, for whatever reason, I believe the marketing says that if you if you list something like that, we have more than 100. Like it's it resonates much better than saying we have 194 titles. Like so, that's it's a marketing thing. 
Uh, Rubber Duck says, uh, Microsoft acquired ClipChamp, which is my understanding a web app. Also, Xbox partnered with Metal, and Xbox is notorious for having bad clip editing software. Yes, it is quite bad. Could it be that the goal is to have people upload unedited footage to, to them and then have them edit it with ClipChamp on whatever device they choose? Currently, you can already do that. It's not straightforward. I mean, you can download your footage through the Xbox app. I would honestly hope that they just put some very basic editing functionality that works more efficiently than what we see now on the console and in the app where you can just edit it like you do on iOS where you can just clip it real quick um, because that's effectively all that you need for most of this stuff. I don't think anybody's, I should say that with a qualifier, I don't think most people are editing their their uber montages of, of, of killing people in Call of Duty or Fortnite or whatever game you're playing on their phone. Most people are probably doing that on a proper PC. Uh, Paul Gatha says, two questions. Is there any chance that Microsoft plans to make their apps not just your phone cross-platform with Android? Um, I mean, technically they, they do. I, I guess I would, because if, if you look at an app, um, well, I guess maybe, I don't know. I was thinking something like OneNote as an example. It is cross-platform on PC, Android, and, and iOS for that matter. Um, your phone on iOS is not really a Microsoft's control. They've done some very basic things, but it's effectively up to Apple to allow that. Um, and then he goes on to say, uh, well, Microsoft was working on 10X. Is there any chance that they continue that work with regard to making a cleaner versions of Windows and maybe tone down the containerized idea? I don't. I think Windows 10 is no longer in a primary development phase. Some of the technologies are being ported over to Windows 11. We already seen some of that stuff. Obviously all the UI elements got brought over, but I would be shocked at this point to see 10X. They wouldn't even call it 10X. Like what do they call it? 11X or something at this point materialize because I think it would just, it, it doesn't, I don't, I don't, I, I try to struggle to say the right words that I don't think that Microsoft would ever ship that because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yes, they need a true Chromebook competitor, but Microsoft isn't known for Chromebook competitors and trying to enter that arena with something called Windows that's not Windows, that acts like Windows but isn't Windows is a really confusing mess and that's why 10X got canned effectively when they came up with the Windows 11 strategy. So I, I don't think we will see it. Microsoft has tried multiple times to do it and they've lost a lot of money along the way. Uh, Lynn Harton says, what's been your experience and have you heard in general about surface hardware reliability? Fantastic question. Uh, would you say you, they seem as reliable as hardware from other OEMs or do they seem to have a niche problems others don't? So my, the, the problem here, and this is a personal problem, is that I align my focus a lot harder towards the surface demographic. Um, I mean, I literally wrote a book about it, which I know you know. Um, I, and so like my, my purview of the universe is much more focused on the surface world. So I hear a lot more about the problems that are going on with Microsoft specific hardware. Now, as in terms of reliability, I would put them probably about the same as other manufacturers. The thing is, is that a lot of people who buy surface are very passionate surface and or Microsoft fans. And so when the minor things happen, uh, they get really angry or they're much more vocal about it. Now, don't get me wrong. There's been some pretty big issues with batteries. Uh, there's been some display issues over the years. Like these devices are not immune to reliability. Conditions. I don't think that they outclass the rest of the market in terms of reliability and but I don't think that they're lagging behind in any significant. I think they, they're probably like right in the middle um, in, in terms of just reliability with the devices. I mean, I have a ton of these things around the house. And so like I'm, I've used the Surface Book 3 every single day on a podcast. And I will use these devices quite extensively. And I use the Surface Laptop 4 just about um, multiple times a week. I've never personally had any major problems. I have had one display issue. I believe it was on the Surface Pro 6. Um, that was able to get swapped out. But um, in my experience, it's been relatively limited. But again, keep in mind that my purview is on these devices and not so much like the Dells of the world. Um, KK Runner has a couple questions. It says, computer question. I currently use a de an XPS 13, 9310, i7, 32, woo, 32 gigs of RAM, 2 terabytes of storage. That's pretty darn good. Uh, do you think if, if I get a Surface Laptop Studio, I will see an increase in performance? I use the XPS for work, home, and want more, want to play more games. I have an Xbox, uh, Series X. I'm looking at the Laptop Studio. So, it, it's hard to say, 
the, the biggest the biggest benefit you will get with the laptop studio is the updated GPU or, or the 3050 Ti. So, which is a pretty pretty good mobile GPU. Um, I actually did a gaming video on the YouTube on the on my YouTube channel. I was gonna say the podcast channel, the YouTube channel, where you can go check it out. But the the high level is is that Apex Legends at the default setting I actually played pretty well. And Call of Duty Warzone definitely needs to be dropped. Um, and then you can also use things like cloud gaming works exceptionally well, but that'll work on your current device. The ex- the device that you have is actually pretty darn good. You're, in my opinion, the CPU performance games are absolutely not worth it. They're not worth it from what you will see. The question becomes is if the GPU is going to be a big enough update for you. I don't know exactly what GPU comes in the XPS 139310, uh, but this is an RTX 3050 Ti, so it's not a super high-end GPU, and for the money that you were looking to spend on the Surface Laptop uh, Studio for a 32 gig version and two terabytes, which is going to put you well over two thousand dollars, um, closer potentially to that. Actually, I think you're going to be three thousand dollars. You can get one hell of a gaming laptop from Dell or Origin or these other guys that are more targeted at that. So. I don't have a perfect answer for you, but I I would not buy it specifically for the CPU upgrade alone. Um, if you need the form factor, that's one thing. But if you just need a traditional laptop, I think you can get a better bang for your buck if you truly just want a beefier GPU for the amount of money that the laptop studio is going to uh, cost you. So, yes, there is that. Uh, BCZ1 says, is there anything in the Stardock world Okay, so qualifier, ding, ding, ding. I work at Stardock, if you're not familiar. So keep keep in mind that this is the software that I my team currently builds. So if you don't like that over conflict or whatever, then I don't know. Turn off now. Uh, BCZ1 says, is there anything in the Stardock world that replaces the Windows 10 taskbar labels and never combines setting in Windows 11? So not yeah, not yet. Um, I was going to say not yet. So it is something that we are working on and looking at. And we, in fact, candidly, we know how to do it. There, There's two approaches to a lot of the stuff that we do. Knowing how to do it and then being able to do it and support it for the long term. These are two different things. So keep that in mind. So we know how to do it, but we got to make sure that we do it in a way that is supported for the life cycle of Windows 11 and won't get cut out by Microsoft um, in three weeks if they push a patch or something like that. So not yet, but Start 11 gets pretty close and then we are continuing to work on it. We just had our first RC1 release uh, yesterday that includes a bunch of features for Windows 11, including bringing the context menu, right click menu back on the taskbar, which is honestly just I, I can't believe Microsoft shipped it in that state. Um, but anyways, you can check out Start 11, but no, not as of this recording, but I want to say forever. Um, so anyways, uh, YB says, congratulations on your new job. Glad to see you are continuing to broadcast on Threat. Of course, podcasting is one of my favorite things to do. A question about the taskbar in Start 11. On Windows 10, due to poor, oh, okay, poor eyesight, I changed the display scale to 150%, which increases the width of the taskbar. So I move it sideways to avoid losing horizontal display area. Windows 11 does not allow moving the taskbar sideways. So I was hoping that the software package would enable that. So currently with the taskbar, we do top and bottom only micro so for people who aren't aware windows 11 does not allow you to move the taskbar at all so start 11 allows you to put the taskbar at least at the top now one thing we do have in the software is that you can actually adjust the size of just about everything including the taskbar the icons and the start menu itself so if you do have vision challenges you can actually go in there and make everything really big so that it's really easy to see now obviously that comes at screen real estate expense but that's only when the, the start menu is open so that might be a a good workaround until microsoft either re-enables this functionality or we get a around to putting it on the side which again we know how to do but it was it, it's a a support and we had to draw a line in the sand to get version 1.0 up and running uh, he says i must admit i do not understand why microsoft to decided to disable the ability to move the taskbar sideways or up it is a simple matter of a display option or am i missing something candidly i think it's because this all came together extremely quickly on the microsoft side i've i feel like they said we're gonna we're gonna do this for windows make windows 11 from 10x and i I suspect this all came together in less than roughly a year. I don't have exact information on when that is. So that's just some speculation on my part, but it feels like Microsoft really moved quickly to get this done. So 
Uh, last question of the week comes from Mr. PKI. How about this for the ending question of the week? Windows 11 is out and everyone is talking about the UX in the new store. Why is nobody talking about the new Windows subsystem for Linux updates? That's because I think it's a niche feature for developers. It is There are a bunch of new features, but it's not as fancy as the new start menu. Uh, I think that is it. Microsoft did do some good under the hood work to making Windows 11 more compatible across the board for different things like the Linux community and added some new features of functionality, but that is is that and so uh actually uh, usman says i believe the windows subsequent the wsl features are part of also windows 10 21 h2 secondly it's not widely used by regular people mainly for developers like myself as a wsl user and a developer that works with docker i have been contemplating my going full-time distro with like elementary os since my pc isn't officially supported by windows 11 and i think microsoft is going to push a few more people potentially on the developer community away from windows because of these new baseline requirements so there you go, guys. That wraps it up for this week. Yet another busy week. And as always, thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you back here next week. Have a wonderful weekend. And we'll catch all of you right back here next time.